According to most climatologists and climate researchers, such as Al Gore in An Inconvenient Truth, higher levels of carbon dioxide are the leading cause of global warming. Carbon dioxide is the second most abundant greenhouse gas and is a byproduct of burning fossil fuels in our automobiles. This compound is easily trapped in ice and glaciers, making it easy for modern scientists to graph the CO2 levels in the atmosphere in a specific year in the past. Ice cores can also provide information on temperature in a particular time when scientists employed by Martin Durkin, the writer of The Great Global Warming Swindle film, analyze some ice core samples taken from the poles. They graph the results and are shown here. In the red, we see temperature going up from early time to later time at a very key interval when we came out of a glaciation. And we see the temperature going up, and then we see the CO2 coming up. CO2 lags behind that increase. It's got an 800-year lag, so temperature is leading CO2 by 800 years. This evidence puts the graph shown here and the graph Al Gore used in An Inconvenient Truth to shame because of the sharp 45 degree angle shown here is just one of the rises following the rise in temperature. This example shows that the research center at the Mauna Loa volcano and Al Gore are not credible because they are not showing the public all of the data. If you look at this graph, you see the natural rise and fall of the Earth's worldwide temperature. But when you look at the time we are living in now, you see a stable plateau in the climate. Now, if you look at the gra CO2 graph taken from the same source, it shows the same rising and falling action, but when you get to the present years, you see a spike in CO2 content in the atmosphere. What these graphs are saying is when Al Gore said that the rising carbon dioxide levels will be followed by temperature rise, he was wrong. If anything, higher levels of CO2 can lead to a more stable climate. Sunspots are dark spots on the sun caused by large magnetic fields on the sun's surface. When sunspots form, they cause solar flares to erupt. When this happens while the Earth is facing that particular part of the sun, the Earth's temperature rises. This graph shows the relationship between the sunspot cycle length and the temperature of the Earth. They are so closely related that when seen, some global warming scientists refuse to comment. Compared to the first graph of the relationship between CO2 and the world temperature, the sunspot and world temperature graph is almost perfectly correlated together. An inconvenient truth does not even mention sunspots, and there is absolutely no way out of coming to the conclusion that sunspots are directly related to the Earth's temperature. Also, using ice core samples, scientists can put together climate information from, in some cases, thousands of years back in time. As you can tell from this graph, the Earth's climate is on a natural climate cycle, going from hot, cold, and back again. On the right side of this graph is the time period we are living in today, and as you can see, there is nothing out of the ordinary. Instead, it is very normal for our Earth to be heating up this much at this time. We can infer from the information on this graph that our climate will slightly increase in temperature or slowly decrease. This next graph shows a smaller section in the previous graph, but with more detail and information. It is obvious that the cycle is a reoccurring pattern. This source goes far enough as to say that Al Gore's prediction of worldwide intense temperature rise is wrong. As you can see in the top left corner, there has been a major global cooling since 2007. An article from Daily Tech also supports this position due to their research using temperature monitoring. The first paragraph on the online blog alone portrays knowledge of numerous example cases of global cooling worldwide. This graph included with the article shows the average monthly temperature for a period of 20 years and obviously shows the sudden decline of average temperature over the past two years. If this is true, as it appears to be, then everything that global warming scientists have been telling us, the public, is a lie. This last graph shows us that since the Precambrian era, the Earth's temperature has been rising and falling naturally and undisturbed. Along the top, it shows the era. and the bottom, it shows the average temperature of that time compared to the average temperature of the records. At the far right side of the source, there is today, which, as you can see, has a much lower temperature than eras such as the early Eocene and the Primo Triassic. 
Overall, it is obvious that CO2 is not causing global warming. This is proven through various charts and research done by scientists. We have come to the conclusion that CO2 is not causing global warming, but is actually helping the Earth's temperature balance out. Not only that, but we have found that the sunspots are actually responsible for heating and cooling off the Earth because of their cycles, as well as the Earth's temperature has actually been cooling since the year 2007. Finally, we know that CO2 is actually following the Earth's temperature, not leading it. There is no doubt in our minds that CO2 is not causing global warming.